What we need to figure out in this video is super simple. This is one of the craziest mattress trees I've ever seen in grand finals. It's up there, guys. Like maybe there's one better, but then it's like on a different region. Whatever. This is crazy. Five wins in a row is super, super hard to achieve in any tournament. Except this one is grand finals. That is crazy. And I think it deserves a video of its own. And it deserves a long, in-depth video like the one we have today. So one thing I want to also emphasize, they've messed up, you know, and messed up, messed up, right? Because it's still, you know, 10th, you gives you gets you some points and stuff, but they've messed up, especially if you contrast it to their other placements. They haven't done that well in the past three games, and game 12 is still ongoing, and it's like there's still 110 points in the lead. That's how crazy their lead is. It's very, very strong. And so what we're going to do again in this video. So what we're going to do in this video is super simple. We're going to be going through the wins. And so what we're going to do in this video is super simple. We're going to go through all the wins and just try to figure out. And maybe we'll go through some losses as well. Maybe especially like the 15th or the 4th. And try in this performance, what actually was the differentiating factor, especially compared to other teams in this grand finals that makes Queezy and Vino so successful. And that's what I want to explore in this video. So buckle up and make sure you guys have your notepads out. And we're going to be learning a lot today. Okay, so while we're loading in this game, I'll give you guys some context. Weezy and Vino got fourth place in game one, which is, you know, really good, all things considered. Um, but they're probably just warming up. They're probably just getting into the groove of it and really trying to understand, like, how they want to play this grand finals. Because there's only so much you can do on paper, only so much you can do in theory. And then a lot of tournaments is adjusting after you have one piece of, like, sample data, right? What I mean by that is you play out game one, you do your best. Based on your preparation, you do your best. And then the adjustment is the important part. So obviously... I want to sort of go through that as well um but i think what we'll learn in this video is what they adjusted was most important because game two this is game two that we're voting right here they win right and they win in a convincing fashion and i want to sort of showcase how they do it so let's go through the vod and sort of um explain everything that i see so if we go to queasy and Vino, and just go through the vod the gxr yep <clears throat> play through they land kinjutsu uncontested dude the force is very good see how they loot they loot the main uh they loot separately bro. this is probably more efficient if you know you're uncontested which they probably did as you know like grand finals and other set lobby formats they have drop maps publicized before they go into here. So they probably know for the most part that they're just completely uncontested. They go very, very early. This is a crucial part for any grand finals format uh, or any set lobby format that has heavy surge. You need to go out early, skip some of the looting, do some surge and then come back, right? And I think that order is very, very important because if you are able to tag people while they're vulnerable, while they're part of their loot path, or you know, they're on their loot path, it is gonna be much easier when compared to fully looting and then going for surge uh after that so that ordering is very very specific and this is very common this is nothing new people have done this for grand finals for many many years and uh this is not a new concept back when young calculator played this was also a thing all right back on uh, chapter i think it was chapter two map yeah i believe so getting surge there is very very good he potentially cuts off their loop path and takes more loot for himself but i think the surge is the most important thing end up claiming gas station two please he's just about to get pushed by a duo right now as we see on the mini map they're looking for the 321. They hit or oh, it's Savage and Video. So they look for the 321, hit for 70 damage. And let's see what ends up happening here. Savage and Video take some damage on the way out. And they get some surge back and forth. So still looking for surge. And what's what's nice about this whole like uncontested area, I guess the off spawn is this is crucial because it, it it sort of dictates how much loot you get. They're very split apart. But they're always in range, if that makes sense, to help each other. Especially now, right? So Vino's not that far from Queezy. It's not like Vino's, like, sitting over here still, right? He's he's looped back around. He went like this, got some surge, and then looped back around to try to get closer to Queezy in case that he needs to be there to help him out, right? And obviously, I think Savage and Video don't actually fully push because they know that it's probably going to be grief for both teams because if Queezy just builds out four metal boxes, there's not really much you can do after that. So let's see how this happens again surge is very very heavy it's so crucial that you run double red eye in these in these lobbies you just have to there, there is no choice you can't do the strat where you have one red eye one smg this doesn't work 
right? You have to run double red, double red eye in these formats just to make sure you get enough surge. And even now, I think they should continue to rack it up if they have the option to find, the, find these people. So there is someone pushing up. And I want you to notice, this is like the crucial part that I feel like a, a decent amount of people forget about. There are most... I, I would like to say all pros know this, but I know that's not true. So I'm going to say most pros know this. That weaving in surge with loot is very, very important. And some people tend to forget that. And then they get like maybe two to three minutes to four minutes of looting. And then they go for surge. And at that point, it's too late. So it's very, very important that you look for surge early on. Right. And you try to weave it in back and forth, back and forth, back from looting into surge mode, into surge mode, into looting. You just got to weave it in and have it become something that's sort of part of each other. Right. Meaning you just go back and forth between the two modes. You don't want to have a very stretched amount of looting for five minutes and then go for surge because it's very unlikely that you'll find any because everyone's boxed up now. Everyone has already found their surge. It's almost a race to find the surge because once your surge is satisfactory, then you can play defensive from there on out. And I think you'll be very happy to do that because you, you surge is a risk. You don't want to continuously go for tags, especially if there's a risk of getting tagged back, right? You go for the free shots, you go for early surge. And then once you feel like, hey, I'm like 300 above, I'm like chilling, like even for next zone, I'm chilling. Like now I can sort of relax. And then if the whole lobby is already good and you're like one of the last teams to actually solve surge, you're not going to find anyone peeking. It's very, very difficult to get surge at that point, which is why it's so important to weave in your surge with your looting path and almost have your loot path part of your surge. You have to sort of path in a direction which gives you surge as well, right? You can't just only path towards chests. And you can see that with, with the how Vino path early on, right? Very, very crucial. Otherwise, it becomes too hard. Okay. Easy take some damage. Yeah, they're just showing this corner. They're going to late rotate in, I believe. And rotate into edge. And they're pretty dead side as it is. So if you look at the zone right now. And if I go back to Queasy and Vino. And you look at the zone, right? Where's congested side? It would probably be somewhere up here, right? where it's going to be most difficult to continue to rotate in. But they have a really nice path being Kinjutsu. And since zone pulls towards them, not literally on them, but it pulls, you know, south, it becomes very easy. To, all they really have to worry about is this one team. And then if they rotate like this, they are good to go. The only con or negative of this path is that you don't get as much surge as you would want compared to this. But you have a positive of a freer rotate and way more math saved. And you could probably refarm a lot easier back here on this map because it is truly dead side. So that will help you. And they really only have one team to worry about. So that's why they sort of... Honestly, this is a very good zone pull, pull for them. If the zone pulled north, I think it would be a whole different story. Which is why so many people, if you look on Twitter and other social media platforms, you'll see that people complain. Pros complain about this all the time. And it is genuinely something to complain about. There is a huge difference between zone pulling on you versus zone pulling away from you. Now, one thing to recognize, there's also a negative between, especially if you don't have surge solved so early, if zone pulls fully on you and you're dead side the entire time, you may not have enough surge, right? And so that's why it's actually sometimes too bad if you don't get surge early and zone keeps pulling on you. Pros have also complained about this. Um, this is very, very uh, grand finals uh, meta, if that makes sense. This is not something that you need to worry about in round one. You don't have to worry about this in round two. And maybe in round three, you may have to worry about it. It really depends. Um, but I think most round threes after like game four, game five start to die out even even nowadays. So um, something to keep in mind is that now they're going to progress past this team. We'll see where Vino is. Vino is right behind Fizzy and they're just going to progress exactly the path that I thought they would do because they get to refarm and truly be 555, right? There is a big difference between 555 and like what Vino has. But now because they because of the pathing towards that side, they're gonna find a lot of refarms, which will give them back the match that they're missing. And that'll that'll add up, right? That'll add up at the end, especially in a grand final setting where every map counts. This refarm will truly help. So let's see what they end up doing. They're gonna buy a pistol? No, they're not. Okay, so they get their cash. This is another thing you could do with the cash. You know, unfortunately season's over, but if you figured it out, this is good for you. You could totally use dead side to your advantage to pull the cash towards you. If the cash pulls dead side, it becomes very easy to not get contested, but also becomes very easy to rotate to it, collect it, refarm, and then continue onwards. Um, so this zone is very, very like good for them. I'm actually curious how they perform or how they even execute on zones pulling away from them, right? Do they stop looting early? Uh, do they... Well, like, let's see what they do, right? I'm sure one of the wins that they have is actually a poor zone one, zone two. You know, who knows? We'll have to see. But again, they're just chilling again on edge because I think... It, like let's say let's say there were edge right here and there's a bunch of teams around them it becomes very hard to for, the, for them to just stay here you know what i mean i think it would be a little bit worrisome but they always have this path right and even queasy moves early taking on some space to make sure that they have that path 
And so Vino is actually really, really comfortable. I think a lot of people fail to do this. This is also something that pros did back in chapter one, a version of this where they would sit on top of a mountain, but then they would spread out. The pros wouldn't actually stay in the same box, right? And or even in the same area. Like for example, the east side of the mountain will have one tower made out of wood. The west side of the mountain, it's a very big mountain. West side of the mountain would also have a tower made out of wood. And what this does is that you control the entire mountain. You have 360 degrees of potential rotates, and that's also very good. And I think a lot of people forget that controlling the entire mountain has those benefits. So if you just sit in one part of the map and you don't have a bunch of space, people can just completely surround you and completely restrict your movement. But with what Crazy and Vino do, it's very important. Vino sits here almost like a, um, he's, he's the guy for search, right? He's the one who's going to tag everyone coming in. But if both Queezy and Vino were sitting here, someone could totally base up here or here and block the rotate. But since Queezy continues on and moves all the way over here, right? You literally see where Queezy is. He's across the map, right? And the reason they feel safe doing this is because partly because of the grand finals meta. I think if you notice, like they have Katana, so they could totally exit as well. But a lot of people are not that ballsy in, in Grand Finals. They have nerves. They're, they're very scared to make plays. And a lot of them don't even have the information that this is happening. We only see this because of replay. So they don't even know that this is happening, right? So Queezy's all the way over there, basically being the anchor or the safe guy to make sure that Vino has a safe rotate. He's basically cleared it, right? And he's going to base up over there, refarming. Um, I wonder if they max out Vino. Well, I think this is what they should have done, actually. So this is a mistake on their end, honestly. This is what they totally should have done. Right here, when Vino's going for the surge, and this was their plan, Queezy should have capped out Vino on his mats and then just farmed the entire way. And I don't think capping out Vino would bring Queezy to an amount that would be so unsustainable that it would hurt him. He would still have maybe, you know, 90 to 100 builds. And that's good enough for him to just, you know, defend himself if he does get into trouble. But he's just going to refarm the entire way. And that way, they can reach that total amount of 3k mats across the entire team. But because Queezy's not, you know, capped mats and he's the one going for surge, Queezy's going to hit cap mats, I believe. He's very, very close. But as a team, you're only around 2.6, 2.7k. So this is a slight misstep by them that could have been optimized. But, you know, I, I think it's not that big of a deal. But it definitely is uh, something that has some significance. I think that could that could totally help them even further. Um, but again, this entire strategy is very, very valuable. Because Queezy's over there, Vino has very full confidence, honestly, of just rotating like this and going through and catching up to, to Queezy when he wants to. I think he'll do that once he feels... Um, how do I say it? that the surge opportunities have completely stopped once he feels like that's the case then he'll go right now he doesn't feel like that right you know he's just going to continue going for surge go back which the slurps and kegs are very very strong for um getting surge right because you can just pop one and just ar trade with someone bloom battle uh so that's why he tries to abuse them for but then once he's done picks up the slurps and continues onward and this entire rotate by queasy queasy's all the way over here now right and i think this is not that extreme. It looks crazy, but I don't think it's that extreme. Because why would someone on, you know, somewhere over here, rotate like this? Everyone's pressured by Storm. Like, no one's going to cut off Vino from reaching Queezy. This is something that I feel like a lot of people forget. Like, Grand Finals is totally different. A, 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 a lobby full of Surge plays out completely different than a lobby with Light Surge or No Surge. And you can actually abuse the lobby playing out that way, right? So Queezy actually goes out all the way to the left. Vino's following up now. And now they still have really, really good positioning. Queezy is getting surged all the way over here. Very, very good strategy by them. And I think this will start to change how Fortnite is being played. A lot of people don't do this much of a split. I've seen people do splits, you know, medium distance. But this is like potentially across the map split. And the only reason it's safe, honestly, is because of the dead side. But this is very, very good by them. So that's solid. Of course, if Queezy gets to about here and then sees a tower over there, then he would probably cut in and try to get a different positioning right like he wouldn't continue onwards queasy only went so far as he thought he could right and then at some point he's just going to stop if there's people and then he's going to get surged there i think again look how much surge they're collecting they put the entire emphasis on surge and still they're only 200 above like the entire game they're worrying about it. and this is just how grants plays out this is why you need double red eye this is why you need to split up so you have you know multiple areas of influence otherwise if you're just staring at the same stuff the chances of you getting this amount of surge is so low like you're not going to be caught up with surge and, but if you look at the map, if you look at the map, like, look how many teams are together, right? And they have to be because they're, you know, on the congested side. I'm very curious how the strategy will play out when they're on a bad zone pull, like Queezy and Vino. If they get a north zone pull, how would they play it? I'm very curious. We're about to find out, right? That's something that we'll watch in the future game after this one. But for the most part, having different areas of influence is super nice. One guy outside of zone, one guy anchoring in zone so that you have a nice free rotate and you'll be chilling at that point. 
And that way, you're also collecting information. Like, Vino knows because he has a teammate all the way over there that the path is safe. Like, Kuizi is actually looking out for him. Like, Kuizi, I believe there's this person right here on the minimap. He should just be right there. Perfect. And yeah, it's solid. It's a very, very strong way to get Surge and solve that for yourself. This, this will hopefully change the meta a little bit. But again, it'll, what, what it will mostly do, because you can only really do this on dead side, it'll probably change the meta to be um, very zone focused. Like, zone pulling on you is very good. You get to abuse that and get a bunch of Surge. And again, I really don't know how they're going to solve the congested bad zone pulls. And it'll probably be some sort of fight to sacrifice some loot to catch up, to compensate. You have to do something to compensate, right? And I feel like that's my prediction. I haven't actually seen the future game. Like, I don't watch Grand Finals live, believe it or not. I only tend to watch in VOD review because then I get to sort of analyze properly. Because Grand Finals broadcast is not a real way to watch or analyze games. Because you don't get the whole picture of focusing on one team. Because it keeps swapping back between teams. Um, and you don't really understand enough, in my opinion. You know, if I were to watch, and I do watch sometimes, it's very much for entertainment purposes. Rather than, you know, learning or education. So, But this is very, very strong strategy by Queezy and Vino. And I think it's very, very nice. Um, and let's see. I mean, you know, it looks free. But truthfully, it's not. Because if you Katana forward or run forward... run Running forward, tarping the whole way is very expensive. Katanaing forward and being arm's length away from everyone gives them a nice AR angle to shoot you, right? This is what I would call a dead a dead zone. Like, you can't enter this until someone else does it for you. Like, create some cover. So, and especially because you're so close to zone, you're not really that concerned with entering early. You can also do a classic strategy that everyone knows by now. Um, is, you know, you just wait for zone to expand, right? Just stay here, wait for zone to expand, and then you can enter dead side. This will also, in turn, make your next rotate really, really free. So I encourage you guys to do that. Like, if you have the opportunity, zone pulls close, but you're not quite in, wait for it to expand, and then go in on dead side if given that opportunity. And it'll be really good, and I predict that is what what, what these guys will do. Um, honestly, they'll probably katana in, but let's see if they katana in towards dead side. So they go in towards, and, you know, base up all the way in the back, which is really nice. Um, they do it pretty early. Um, I think if they wait too long, it'll probably be troublesome for them because then, you know, people will be here and holding them. And it'll be really, really hard. So as soon as they see the opportunity to go into these old builds, technically these are old builds. I don't believe some of these wood walls are theirs, right? So that'll create some natural cover for them to actually hide in and, and sort of protect themselves further because two boxes sitting right here has a way bigger chance of just getting servered and potentially sprayed for even surge purposes versus going all the way deep, waiting for this to expand and hiding behind old builds of wood. And they still continue to refarm. They still get to hit trees. And that's what Dead Side does for you. I think, honestly, that one thing that Vino could have done to cap out, like himself, like Kuzi caps him out, could have been even more helpful. But I think it wouldn't have made that big of a difference because of the fact that Surge exists. Like, they actually prioritize Surge over the mats. Like, I think if Squeezy refarmed that much, the Surge may not have been as good. But let's see. Like, let's see how they play this game out. Yeah, my point is, I think it would have been a good thing to do, just not as impactful as, you know, something like in a regular game, because Surge is pressuring them so much. They have to they have to deal with it. It's not like they can just cap out 555 mats, both of them, and just chill. Like, they have to deal with Surge um, even, even now. I think at this point, it's starting to get to a really good amount. Maybe if they get 100, 200 more damage, then I think it would be solid. But for now, it's chilling dead side. Look how much free movement they get. Again... They're just chilling and they get to move around really, really freely. This is what that one thing does. I think rotates, people tend to forget. Rotates are very snowball-y. For example, I'll give you a really good example for standard games, just so it's more relatable to you guys. So for a standard game with very little surge or no surge at all, you'll you'll find, and, and let me be clear, it's, it is still stacked, right? It's very close to the surge amount, but you're not getting zapped at any point. It's very unlike Grand Final. Let's imagine that for a second. And in this case, you have to understand, it's very difficult to go, like, let's say for one of these zones, you rotate late. Maybe you were fishing, maybe you were on a cache, and you rotate late, right? Maybe zone three, you were on edge. It's very, very late. It's very difficult to go from, like, zone three or zone four edge to go center. Because you'll always be late, right? Like, the idea is, once you make one bad rotate, the rest of your rotates are affected. It's very snowball-y. It's very interconnected. It's not as independent as most people think. It's not like, my rotate for zone three, okay, check, we're good. Good to go. We made it safely. Didn't use that many mats. You need to think of the entire game holistically. You need to look at it in a, in a complete puzzle, not just pieces of each zone. And a lot of people tend to think of it in pieces. And I think that's what ruins people in terms of their mindset, right? 
not even mindset, but I guess the way that they look at the game. Because if you look at them as individual pieces, you'll not see how your re previous rotate two zones ago has affected how difficult this rotate is now, which has you know, potentially gotten you shambles or gotten you scuffed because of the fact that this rotate was so hard and it's because of that previous rotate. So I'll give you a good example, right? Very simple example. Because they choose to go like this, because wait, this, this all is so super interconnected, right? Because they get early surge, that gives them the ability to go dead side. Because again, if you don't get that early surge and you go dead side, you are pretty screwed, right? Because you don't have surge. And that's the, one of the negatives of going dead side is that you won't find that much surge, right? Versus being congested side. The positive of being congested side is you find a lot of surge and potentially easier impacts and, you know, fights and stuff. But there's a very, very big negative be with being over here, right? Especially throughout the previous zones as well. Is it each rotate is incredibly difficult. It, it becomes very expensive, right? It becomes very, very difficult. So they get early surge, which is relevant because that enables them to find dead side and go like this. That enables them to get refarm. That enables them to continue onwards. And eventually they get another lucky half half zone pull, which then they continue to go dead side again. But it's important, like a lot of people like just hear dead side, dead side, dead side, and they're just like, I'm just gonna go dead side. What do you need before you go dead side? Make sure you have that and try to work work it through as a complete holistic pattern of all the decisions that you make and how they affect each other. I think that's what's important and what's honestly missing from um, the intermediate to advanced players in Fortnite today. They need to understand that the game exists as a whole. It's not just piece by piece. And I think a lot of people feel sort of relieved, like, oh, we made this rotate. Good job. We're in. We're safe. We didn't use that many mats. And then they're congested side or misposition. And it's really, really hard to see at all for the next rotate. Like, when should we go? I don't know. We can't see. Right. So position yourself um, with the future in mind. And I think that will help your Fortnite game tremendously. So that's something that Queasy and Vino have shown us is their sort of understanding, like in grand final setting, you need a lot of surge. And so that's why they do that strategy to split up and do the anchoring one guy in zone, one guy out of zone. All of these got all of all of these plans exist because they thought ahead from their past experience, of course. But I think that is what what's ultimately missing for most people. You need to do this. So let's see. Still very, very healthy amount of mats. Pretty, pretty chilling. Uh, I think they could pop a big very, very soon. I wonder why they don't actually. It's not obvious to me. He, they, he does before they leave. Pop another big. By the way, minis overrated. Why are they overrated? Especially in this meta. Let me be clear. Especially in this meta. Slurps are what you call a panic heal. And they heal whites, right? And I think it's better to be... Uh, like, think about it this, this way as well, right? If you get tagged, and in grand finals, you mostly get tagged by AR, right? Like, you won't get tagged by SMG or pump or like, it's very difficult to get tagged in that in that way. Unless you've made a mistake macro-wise, right? Bigs heal effectively the same amount as six minis. Three bigs, six minis equal. Bigs obviously take more time, but the advantage that bigs have is that it gets to top you off in the later half of the shield portion, right? But that I would hate to run around with 150 HP, which is what minis does, right? Minis just heals you up to 150. I think bigs are superior in this meta. Now, in other game modes, maybe in round one or whatever, and you don't have slurps in the meta, then maybe minis would be more, you know, beneficial for you. But I think meta is all relative. Like meta always makes things underpowered and overpowered because of the relative other options that you have for items, right? So if slurps didn't exist, minis would actually be pretty good, right? But because slurps exist, minis are not that good. So that's something, a nice lesson that you can take with you for the next meta, the next season, is don't just think of like what got nerfed, what got buffed. There's indirect nerfs and indirect buffs that you should take into account as well. So continuing on with the gameplay, I think Queez and Vino have just found a really nice two, two by one base right here. Uh, and they're just chilling. They went rather early and I think they're just chilling. So actually, I do want to watch this rotate one more time. So let's just head back once, once more and just take a look at this rotate because I do want to see this uh, in terms of like the timing. You know, what do they see that makes them decide, hey, I want to go now, right? For, for the most part, they're just getting a bit of surge because I think they should always continue. Never underestimate surge. Just not, lesson number one. Because like sometimes you're 400 above and then you go into moving and then you're like 50 above or 10 above, right? So like, especially if it's free surge, like meaning you're not risking getting tagged too much for it, totally continue. Don't underestimate surge, especially in a grand finals or even a heat setting. A lot of people in heats, especially because they're not experienced veterans, they tend to underestimate surge a lot. And I think that's what gets them killed uh, a ton in heats. <laughs> so definitely get it early. Definitely weave it in with your loop path. Make sure that you're not underestimating it even at this point, even if you're 400 above. They go pretty early, I believe, because of the fact that it's open and zone has exposed itself, right? It's been a few seconds by now. And so this is technically in zone. So they're just going to go in and box up. The idea is very simple for rotates, guys. If it is truly free, and this is the hard part to analyze or judge, I guess, right? That's what makes rotates hard. But if it is free, 
then go. If someone's stopping you from going, then maybe you can wait on them to go. And I think you can use that in, in the past tense. Meaning, like, you want to position in a place every time you rotate in a place where there's not that many dependencies around you. And a dependency is just someone that's blocking you. So, for example, that's what this rotate does, right? When you go in on the half half and you go in towards here, that rotate makes it very, very nice because you're not really depending on many people. There's not that many people close in a tight knit circle around you, right? There, there's people around, but they're pretty far away. So then your next rotate becomes very free, right? Because of that. All, so like the idea is your positioning should keep the future in mind. How do I make my next rotate more free? Because if you just think of it in pieces and just think of it like, hey, I want to get in, doesn't do it justice, okay? So let's continue. Double katana, video gets some tags on them, that's okay. Doesn't overbuild. Look, look it's, that's very important, right? Because a lot of people tend, especially in grand finals with the nerves, like they tend to bounce and then just like build a ton, especially panic build. Panic building wastes so many maps because you have to understand there's there's grid uh, grid pieces or grid availability under the map as well. And so if you panic build and you just spam like this, 10 builds just gone, right? For no reason. Uh, I, I'm okay with Queasy actually building like one or two walls wood towards these guys to make sure that he doesn't take any future damage. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I think that like him doing that is okay as well. It's pretty good. But again, I have no idea how laggy it is, how, how like it, it could totally be very, very difficult to do that in this sort of setting. In grand finals, it, it, especially in some, some particular games, it gets very, very, very laggy. Very difficult to play. Again, they're sitting at about 180 builds total, which is very, very nice. Very, very, I think they're exactly 180 builds. So yeah, so let's see how they play the moving. The moving zones are very, very crucial. I, I'm actually curious how they play this. And so let's take a look. Good spraying because they have extra ammo to do that for surge purposes, but also for making sure that they get other people out of the game. Right. That's always going to benefit you. But the main reason is to get surge and kills. Kills are worth a lot in grand finals. So that's another reason. Any extra ammo that they have, they just continue to spam and just spray and make sure they get pick up those extra kills. I think rotating early, guys, I think a lot of people underestimate this, especially with nerves in play. And this is the crucial part. Rotating early is good if you don't feel like you get service speed after. And that's why you see them rotate early all the time, even for the half half, right? But I think it's important you do it at a good time in a, and land in a position where you don't get service break. Like those builds helped. Landing here was pretty good next to the tree, right? All these things add up and help you make good decisions on rotates. That tree was actually rather relevant. I, but at the same time, the timing is important. For example, on this rotate that they just did, when they go in, it's actually a time where other people are also considering rotating, right? So they don't go in when zone just shows and then box up and then, you know, then they're going to have to go in again because this is the eight zone which doesn't actually expose itself until zone starts to move, right? And so they wait until zone starts to move and then wait maybe like five to 10 extra seconds and then go in. And the reason why that is, is because not only do they get an early rotate, but they also go in at a time where everyone else is considering rotate and also have to rotate. So then that means there's less people available to shoot at you, which makes you safer in turn. So this is really, really nice by them. And I think beginning of first moving will be pretty straightforward. So just Katana forward and hopefully find some elevation. I don't think they want to be too, too low ground here because especially uh, you guys may not know this, but this pond right here, it's going to kill so many people. And I think some of you guys watching this video will know what I mean. <laughs> this pond will kill so many people, but you'll see. It's, it's not good, honestly. Uh, I don't like that it exists, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how it, how it ends up playing out. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you, <laughs> if you have this map knowledge, you should definitely get off the ground. You don't want to be ground layer there. Not going to be good. So, pretty late rotate. I think it's interesting how that works out. But I think, um, I wonder why they do this. Do they, do they do this to make sure they get the most horizontal distance? Or also, I guess the second reason is to make sure that they get elevated. I'm a fan of going late here. I'm not a fan of going last second. So I wonder why they're okay with doing this. Because, you know, height could totally beam them if they wanted to. But maybe they make sure that height is distracted before they go. Like, who knows, right? But elevation is going to be key here. So they're going to be very, very elevated. Connected to that wood. Perfect. Very, very elevated. Ah, okay. So that's nice. Because they rotated so late, it's very, very nice because they don't have to katana one any anymore. They can just tarp in maybe two to three more boxes and they'll be solid. They'll be in. And they get elevation by going late because then everyone else will go before them because, you know, they're going late. And then they get to base up on top of everyone else, which is really, really nice. And that's what you want. You want elevation. Right. That's going to help you remain safe because look how, look how unpeaceful this looks. People will pressure you <laughs> like you, it's just fights on fights on fights and fights. And, and I don't think you want to be here in zone one, two or three, honestly, 
maybe middle or end of three you can start to take it but i don't like putting rules on certain things like let's wait and see how the game plays out and try to play it rather intuitively but i think this is rather good this is good it gives them elevation if they go uh early it's not gonna happen uh, my only concern is why be the last team i guess what that does for you and going very, very last second is that you don't have to katana again because if they did go you know maybe five to ten seconds early where would they base they would probably have to base right here right if they base right here don't you agree that it's more expensive to tarp it right so if they can get away with the super late rotate and i guess that's what they're being careful about they need to make sure height's distracted because ultimately who's the main target that's going to shoot you mid-air of a katana it's height so they probably waited until they're either shooting someone else you know getting cranked up on or something of that nature to be distracted for them to go and so like if you can get away with that you'll save a ton of mats and you'll you'll see like how um how do i word this how non-impact they play they don't look for impact impact is not part of their zone one to three game plan right of course if things go wrong then you can compensate by trying to go for an impact but ideally you play the early to mid game very very correctly and if you do that then you don't you don't actually need impacts for zone one to three even in grand finals it's very meta specific but in this meta you don't need one you just don't right if you solve surge and you have katana you like double katana you, you're chilling you are completely fine so that's really good by them getting rid of their bigs first splashes and slurps will prove very effective for the healer and uh, another aspect that i think you should keep in mind is they don't have any storm sickness ticks yet which will help for the healer so they're playing really well not opening anything just holding just don't edit anything guys like a lot of people tend to think like hey i have extra time let me go for shots wrong don't do that <laughs> especially because there's 34 people left and you're 300 above do you need surge no you don't if there's a free free truly free kill sure but there's not anything free about because you're bored you want to edit out and just like look for stuff it's not as free as you think not only do people have counterplay in a laggy grand final setting because they can take your walls and you know spray back and you can't really react that fast but also it makes your walls weaker and that's not good we don't want our walls to be weak there is benefit and value in our walls being strong and that's why i think we should not edit so much you should edit with the purpose and right now they have no reason to edit so let's not edit all right so they're just gonna chill and let's see what ends up happening. See, they can spray out height here. And then take it. Or what if they're gonna take it? Go front side crank, maybe? Is this truly, guys? This is truly the first time I'm watching this. I did not watch Grand Finals uh, in at least this season. I, I haven't watched it from the live broadcast. Crank up? Yep. Okay, they, that is an enemy, yeah? Oh no, that's Queezy. Okay, perfect. You have it. That's very easy from here. <clears throat> Go up very high. And I think if they play height from here, and I, I imagine it's some pattern of this, right, for the end game, where they just play height, uh, they take height by being second height, spraying it out, because if you're not second height, you don't have that angle, which is why you need to late rotate for that first moving. So relevant. And I think a lot of people tend to forget, like, if you don't late rotate, and I think this has an, uh, how do I say, a factor for why they go center eighth zone as well. Because if you go edge, there's a possibility of you pulling zone, which is actually not that good because you can't late, late rotate. Right. If you early, if you have to early rotate, you may not get second height. You need second height for this play to work. And I think that's like something crucial. Do you see how it's all connected? It's so sick. This is what makes Fortnite worth playing. Obviously, all the bugs and all the stuff. Like, it's not. That's that's the stuff I hate. Like for sure, I hope they fix all that stuff. Um, but Fortnite is such a unique game competitively, and I think a lot of people need to appreciate that. And I think that sort of curiosity and you know love of the game will help you learn because it'll it'll let you understand these sorts of concepts. And this is not, you know, independent or uh, exclusive for Grand Finals. There are such strategies for round one as well. If you struggle in round one, you just need to be curious enough to look for them. And I think you'll absolutely find plans like this that sort of work, right? There's there's relevance in them going center eight, right? Because then the volatility of zone pulls is not high. You, the distance to the next zone will be equal no matter where it pulls. Whereas if you go edge, you can pull really far zones, and then that's not that good because then you'll have to rotate first, right? Because zone will pressure you. And then also, if you go into... How do I word this? Uh, if you pull zone, then you'll also maybe have to go first. I guess you don't have to go first, but you don't want to You don't want to get a far zone pull. So getting center eight would be really, really nice, right? Because then you get, you get to rotate late, right? And you get to not have to go immediately because Storm is on your back. You know what I mean? So that would be really nice. And that's what creates that positioning, where, which allows them... And I imagine if we go look at the other wins, it'll be very similar. It'll be very, very similar. Um, the only thing I find different, and I, I have a question mark about, and I don't really know yet. Like, I, I want to figure this part out. Is if zone pulls far, what do they do? We'll find that out in the future game right here. But let's see. It's beautiful, man. 
And I think I might actually make another video on a game like that because this game is really, really solid. It's a, it's a classic archetype of pulling zone game, right? So they, they, they address it in a certain way. And I believe the next video that I make will be around how do they solve the game of pulling far. It'll be pretty much very similar, but I think in zone one, two, three, and four will be slightly played differently. I, I think you have to play differently. You have to compensate for zone pulling far. Otherwise, it won't work. Maybe they go into, you know, uh, Mega City and then take the dragon. Uh, I think that's very risky to do in grand finals, so probably not. Uh, I think you'll get tagged the entire time. People are very, very aware. Pros are extremely accurate with their red eyes, so that's probably not going to work. But there'll be some version of rotating early. Um, uh, I don't think tanking storm will work because then you just can't win. We'll have to see. Let's see where zone pulls in one of their wins. And try to try to figure out in Vaudeville that one as well. And you see how I'm Vaudeville, guys. Like, it's not that hard, honestly, to see... I want you to, it, I know it's uh, making it sound like, oh, just think this way. It's so easy. And I know I have experience that allows me to make these like conclusions, but uh, I think you'll learn a lot if you just sat down and watched and truly watched uh, a pro play, right? I think the biggest struggle that most people have is that they don't critically think, and that is a skill. You can learn to do that based on experience and also the, the, the frame of mind for how you should think, logical deductions, right? Um, and also understanding that pieces are not independent in fortnite you should look at it as a whole and plan ahead and look at the past as well and see how that affected your mistake here um and also and and just to counteract that point a little bit sometimes mistakes are just in the moment meaning you've done everything else correctly like literally 90 percent, the first 95 percent of the game was all good and then you make one slight mistake and you're dead that also exists the point is when you're VOD reviewing you need to differentiate between the two so that in the first case where it is a mistake two three zones ago you can fix that because you've realized it and then in the second case you can also not be sort of um, overthinking it and just be like hey i just made a bad edit here or i rotated with a bad timing and that's just what killed me it's important to make that differentiation because that's how you can accurately find out what your mistakes are in the world of competitive so i mean the game i can tell from the beginning once they get heightened second moving that the game's just over it's pretty self-explanatory from here honestly it's not that hard i mean there's pressuring you know goes down he has an extra slurp Queasy has enough heals you know slurp splash slurp is the perfect heal that you can get an extra slurp is not going to help him much and i believe vino should just have one slurp yep that third slurp is not going to help him much and Queasy's just gonna he's looking for whites he has ping i believe i wonder if he's pinging some stuff i don't know if ping's actually showing replay so that'll be interesting but i think he's just pinging loot maybe yeah he is you can see him doing it you can literally see him doing it so he's pinging stuff why because he wants to see if he can add on anything to his heal off that would be helpful right if you could find this sort of loot and see if it would help maybe the flag that would be pretty good one thing to consider about the flag is that um and what i'm circling here is not the minimap but the flag underneath the minimap one thing to consider is that other people may think the same thing and so you might run into someone here but i doubt you'll run into someone here you'll, you'll get further reach from being on height and katana over there someone low ground will not be able to katana all the way this far so that'll be really helpful if you can add on some white heals to your existing heals but let's see if he found anything he's just pinging stuff and they end up winning anyways <laughs> but this is a fail safe insurance to make sure that if it does go to heal off they have a plan to win and they've just guaranteed they've checkmated since second zone truly and they go high enough to the point and they pressure it and they make sure that no one's able to come up and pressure them off and and that's very important i think a lot of people tend to forget in a meta like this it is totally solvable to the point where mechanics aren't as required as you think now, Queasy and Vino have good mechanics because in round one, round two, and round three, they may be very required. But in a grand final setting, if you can play properly, I think it's very, very good. Maybe you'll need mechanics a lot more in a situation where zone pulls really, really far. And then you'll need an impact to compensate for your scuffness because you have to rotate so early and so far. And that'll be a negative. But that's something that we'll cover in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been of some help to changing your perspective about Fortnite and how it should be played. And I think... This will continue, right? This is a trend. People are finding new strategies. People are finding different ways to play the game. And I don't think we're anywhere near the peak of how Fortnite should be played. We'll continue to discover and we'll continue to discover more and more, more optimal ways to play the game. And that's what's so beautiful about the game. Guys, thank you again so much for watching. Check out all the links in the description for coaching, the new mouse, all that good stuff. And leave a comment if you've enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.